now we can start talking about uh, hydrocarbons with uh, other elements and these are called functional groups uh, so an alcohol is a type of functional group and it occurs when a hydrocarbon is bonded is uh, bonded to an OH group All right, and so the simplest um, alcohol would be one hydrocarbon, one carbon. So we got uh, carbon bonded to three hydrogens, and instead of bonding to a fourth hydrogen to become uh, methane, is bonded to an OH group. And of course, um, the actual uh, structural formula for this um, molecule would be oxygen uh, with two bonds, uh, one to carbon, one to hydrogen, and of course two lone pairs. But uh, most of the time uh, when we uh, start drawing organic compounds, we assume we already know that. And so what we will just show is that this um, CH3 group is bonded to an OH group like that. But really, it's like this. Okay? Um, and of course, the uh, number of carbons bonded to this OH group can be more. Um, we could have two carbons. So ethane would be... Uh, would, would look like this if I drew another hydrogen but instead I can draw it with an OH group and that would make it an alcohol so this OH group right here makes this an alcohol alright um, so of course we want to be able to name these and anytime we have an OH group on a hydrocarbon um, if it's um, a simple alkane what we do is we ch uh, use the starting prefix from the alkane so methane and then we add an ol to the end of it to indicate that it's an alcohol so this is methanol all right and of course down here this was a two hydrocarbon so ethane becomes ethanol we can even have larger hydrocarbons with alcohol groups and if that alcohol group is on a different carbon we'd of course name it by using the numbering system so let's say there's an OH group on this carbon for this molecule okay so this is one two three four five six and so that's hexane and that uh, OH group is a one two three group so this is three hexanol All right, and um, so on and so forth. Uh, if um, the OH group is on the end of a longer compound, we would just draw it like this. And of course, the only uh, thing we have to remember is this uh, last line is not a carbon. That's connected to the oxygen in this um, OH group, this alcohol functional group. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's where we would stop counting. So this would be 7, and it would be, hep it would be 1 heptanol. But usually if the alcohol group's on the number 1, uh, it's often not written. So heptanol and one heptanol are the same thing. All right, so that's the uh, first functional group. We have an alcohol, uh, which has that OH group bonded to a hydrocarbon. Uh, the second one we'll talk about are known as ketones. And um, a ketone is when there is a carbonyl, a carbon, double bonded to an oxygen somewhere I say in the middle of the hydrocarbon so it's, that carbon's not connected to a hydrogen it's connected to two other carbons to an oxygen and two other carbons Alright, and so uh, this is the double bond to oxygen, and of course that would also have two lone, uh, lone pairs, but usually we don't write those. Um, and then on this side is a carbon, it doesn't matter what carbon, it could be 
um, uh, CH3 group and this excuse me this should have been a just a hydrogen all right and so that is a ketone and of course we can draw this uh, for skeletal um, on skeletal structures wherever that ketone is we just would draw a double bond to an oxygen a carbon double bonded to an oxygen is called a carbonyl group and so anytime you have a carbonyl uh, that's bonded to carbons that is a ketone So for naming uh, ketones, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Um, this is actually a very common ketone. This is acetone, so that would be its common name, acetone. And the uh, ketones end in O-N-E, just like the alcohols end in an O-L. Um, another way we could um, name this is by naming both of the uh, side groups. So there's, these are two methyls connected to the carbonyl, and so you can also call this dimethyl uh, ketone, because there's two methyl groups on that ketone. So DMK is often an abbreviation for acetone, because it's dimethyl ketone. And the uh, other one, uh, way you can do it is if you've got a bigger one, you could, you could do it a couple different ways. So this will be a methyl group, and this is one, two, three, so that's a propyl group, so you can say methyl propyl ketone, or you can say uh, one, two, three, four, five, so that would be uh, pentane, and it's that the carbonyls on the second carbon, so this would be two uh, pentanone. All right. And uh, so that is the systematic way is to number where the uh, uh, carbonyl group is and end in O-N-E. All right, so I mentioned that that was a carbonyl and it had to be connected to two carbons sort of in the middle of that molecule. Uh, when the carbonyl is on the end of an alkane or any other hydrocarbon or bonded to also to a hydrogen, that is known as an aldehyde. So an aldehyde, it has a carbonyl uh, group bonded to a carbon and a hydrogen. A carbon atom and a hydrogen atom. All right, and so uh, simply these uh, would be uh, so the simplest. Um, aldehyde would be um, this compound, one carbon bonded to uh, two hydrogens is technically an aldehyde. I said, I know I said a carbon atom and a hydrogen atom. So if this gets any bigger, that's where it, my definition makes sense. But this is the simplest aldehyde. And so if I have two carbons and suddenly that carbon is bonded to a hydrogen and a carbon, that is uh, an aldehyde. And so this would be um, methaldehyde uh, because it's one carbon, and this would be two carbons, so that's ethane, so ethaldehyde um, is how we would name those. Um, we can also put uh, these aldehydes on uh, longer molecules and draw them in skeletal functions. And so this would be one uh, scenario where you have to draw the uh, H, you don't have to, but most people do, to show that this is an aldehyde. So since this carbonyl is on the end, I would draw uh, the hydrogen on the end just to highlight that this is an aldehyde uh, instead of a, uh, a ketone or something uh, similar. Okay. So uh, one other uh, um, functional group that we'll talk about in this uh, video is a carboxylic acid. And a carboxylic acid, the way I like to think about it, is it's basically a uh, combination of a carbonyl and a hydroxyl group and an alcohol. And so you've got a carbon and you've got it bonded to a 
uh, oxygen, carbonyl, and then it's also bonded to an OH group. Okay, and this can be bonded to anything else. And so oftentimes when we, it's bonded to anything else, we say it's bonded to an R group. So this R is any hydrocarbon. Okay. And so, um, of course, uh, the simplest uh, carboxylic acid is this carbon, one carbon, and that's methanoic acid. And so we change the name to ic acid from the prefix methanoic acid. This also has a formal name, or excuse me, a common name, formic acid. But the uh, systematic name would be methanoic acid. Um, if we uh, have two carbons, so CH3, COOH, this would be ethanoic acid because that's two carbons. So ethanoic acid. Or, of course, this also has another formal uh, common name, excuse me, acetic acid. So this is acetic acid. All right, um, so these are acids. We've talked about acids before. They can donate protons, okay? And so when a, a carboxylic acid donates its proton, it's actually the proton that's on that uh, OH group. And so this can be donated to, say, water. All, all carboxylic acids are weak acids, so it sets up equi equilibrium for H3O+, plus, and then what is known as the carboxylate ion. And these are usually named with uh, change names of ATE, carboxylate ion. And so acetic acid, the ion that's produced is acetate, acetate ion, or ethanoate. Uh, formate would be the uh, anion that is produced after formic acid uh, donates its protons.